All right, now we're going to show how to print the registration marks so you can use the onboard camera to calibrate the offsets between the output of your heads. Since your heads are loaded manually by the user, they may be a, you know, a millimeter or half a millimeter off in one axis or another, and we have to calibrate to see exactly where the output is so that we can, all, we can offset that to make it all line up. I'm warming up my heads on my bed right now, and if we go to our 3D view, this G-code is what I have loaded. You can get that from our website, highrail3d.net, slash download, slash G-codes, and it's called plus.gcode. And you can also just get to it from the wiki on the instructions page. Now I have it here displayed. I'm going to show a single layer. I've got my two heads here set, and they're rendering here in blue and yellow. Let's see what I've got. I've got oops, yellow for the first head and blue for the second head, so let's go to our 3D view. For some reason, the 3D view is showing in green and purple. So I'm going to go back to our control, make sure that I set that actively to yellow and actively to blue. And now, we see yellow and blue. So what we're going to do, we're going to print with the head in slot number two the pattern in yellow, and then we're going to print with slot number three, the head, the pattern in blue. Now these are going to be about 35 millimeters off because the head slots are about 35 millimeters apart, but we're going to use the camera to calibrate where those two center patterns, the crosshairs are. And then we're going to bring them back and print it again and they should overlap perfectly when we do it again. All right, our heads are almost at temperature. I'm going to put a little spray on the hotbed. You would prep it normally for whatever materials you're going to be printing with. And as soon as we get up to about 220 or 230, we'll give it a start. If we want to see the page on the wiki, it's just go to highrail3d.net. instructions. This is a bunch of videos and PDFs. It's been updated a lot lately. Here's an intermediate printing, multiple heads, and here's the calibration target G-code link. This is the actual G-code that we're going to run today. Morning. Morning. So I'm going to manually just advance some material from these heads to make sure it's flowing properly. That one looks good. And that one looks good. start. Because I had such a large lead in, the initial piece didn't stick down. But that's fine, our pattern looks good, so I'm just going to nip that off so it can lie flat. I'll have to adjust that in the code a little bit. I'm going to go to Repetrel and on the camera. I'm going to make sure I select my PC camera, which is the one pointing down from the bottom of the yoke. We'll cross our fingers and hope that my USB chain is working right today. Alright, let's go to park. Right, 
So I'm just going to nudge over here and center these crosshairs on this output from the second head. I'm going to go to fine move so I can make moves as small as 50 microns. And darn if that doesn't look like it's just right. Maybe just a little bit high. Alright. That then I'm going to click on these numbers, these relative distances for the X and Y in red, and I'm just going to set them to zero. We're going to go over here and we can see that those distances are set to zero on each head. Now I'm going to use the arrows to nudge it over. center these on the Y. I'm going to call that center. So I'm going to go down here to the second head and I'm going to click grab and it'll source in these numbers 35.35 in the X and negative one millimeter in the Y. Okay, now I'm going to go flash that data by right clicking on the flash button and send that data up to the head. In case I have to do a restart, I'll have that saved. And now I'm going to home everything, clean off my bed, and print it again. And this time I'll expect these numbers to be uh, exactly, this output to be exactly overlapping. I am going to edit my G-code just a little bit because I don't want to have that long leader like I originally had. So I'm just going to bring this line here, add it again, and I'm going to make this one an E0 or no E value, and bring this to let's make it X50, Y50. A little bit of globs that came off the print head it got scooped up during the printing process. Well, if we look at the print itself, now it looks, it looks like a green line because the blue and the yellow are overlapping really well. So I'm going to say these numbers are good. They're stored on the head. And next we're ready to bring in an STL. We'll actually bring in two STLs that nest for the next video. We'll slice them so that they nest properly and then we'll print them with these heads with these offsets. See you in the next video.